Verse 4. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The law shows you righteousness, but gives you no help. It's weak in helping. But once Jesus is received, the, the power of His Spirit brings out the righteous requirement of the law. If we could use our numbers example of Israel standing at Kadesh Barnea, refusing to go into the promised land. Why do they refuse to go? It's their land. This makes me mad every time I read it. It's their land. God said you can have it, and they refuse to go in because they feel their flesh can't take it. And God says, you're right, your flesh can't take it, so I'm going to wait till your flesh is, and this is a rough phrase, but Hebrews uses this, I'm going to wait until you carcass in the wilderness. That's what the author of Hebrews says. I'm going to wait until you carcass in the wilderness, and then I'm going to find someone that believes, and we're going to go take that land. I really believe that the transition that's going on in the church right now, there is a transition, folks, around the world. I believe there are going to be some people that have to carcass in the wilderness for us to see the fullness of the kingdom come ripe in the finished work. God doesn't have to. Is God going to kill them? God's not in the killing business. I don't think we know what spirit we're of when we have God in the killing business. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. Quit this, guys. You don't even know the Father. But there... But for Joshua to go take the land, how many of you know Moses needs to die on the mountain? Joshua and the children of Israel never took the land until Moses had died on the mountain. And I think that there is a generation coming that's going to take the message of righteousness by faith to the world. And there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of carcassing going on in the wilderness right now. It's okay, we're going to make it through that. And if it's not my generation or these young kids' generation, it's going to be one of them. It's going to be a generation that has been restored by righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. Because the Bible tells us that there will come a day when they will not remember the old heaven and the old earth anymore. That's what Isaiah said. And I'm believing there's going to come a day when we will not remember that, that cosmic struggle of works versus his righteousness. The righteous requirement for Israel was believe and I'll give you the land. And so the righteous requirement for you for, for, was for them to take the land, but their flesh actually kept them from it. Let's, let's head towards our close of Galatians chapter 5 real quick. This is a complimentary passage. I don't want to stay here too long, and I will end up closing in the book of Hebrews in just a second. But look at Galatians chapter 5. I want to just clear this up because it is a very Western world phenomenon when people sin, the front page of tomorrow's newspaper will say, fall from grace. You notice that? Especially if it's a pastor or like a uh, world-renowned church leader and they sin, and the next day it'll be, fall from grace. What is our definition in the American church of falling from grace? Sinning. We think when someone sins, they fell from grace. We've been deceived by the enemy. When someone sins, they don't fall from grace. Paul said in Romans 5, where iniquity doth abound, grace doth much more abound. What's higher, grace or sin? And, and if, let's do the chart again. Where iniquity abounds, grace does much more abound. So what would happen if you fell from grace? You, you, you say, well, that's why. We say they fell from grace, they fell into sin. So Paul, realizing the conundrum, he realizes the conundrum of that illustration. He's the one that laid the illustration out in Romans 5. He got iniquity and he got grace. So Paul clears it up in Galatians 5. He says this in verse 4. You have become estranged from Christ. Those of you who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. So Paul says the fall from grace is not when a man sins. The fall from grace is when a man tries to find his justification and his righteousness by performing. I'm going to climb that mountain and take the land, even though it's not where I'm supposed to be. I'll impress God by climbing that mountain. Let me tell you how this looks today. We don't have Kadesh Barneas and Jordans and promised lands and giants and grapes. So how do we apply it to today? We have plenty of activity. What happens when we sin is the enemy brings to us 
a silver platter full of church-approved performance and says, take your pick, pick two or three, do them the best you can, and God will be happy. Pastor, that's silly. Well, is it? The last time you failed, did your follow-up prayer sound anything like, did your follow-up resolve sound anything like, you know what, to keep this garbage from happening again, I'm going to start fasting every week for a day. I'll tell you what, keep this garbage from happening again. I'm going to call a pastor and we're going to get involved in one of those programs at church where we go and work a couple nights a week. I'm sick of this garbage. I'm going to quit this sinning business. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to get on a Bible reading plan and I'm going to read 20 chapters every day. You know what? I'm tired of this sinning issue. I'm going to get up at 4.30 every morning and I'm going to lay on my carpet before God and I'm going to seek Him early before the sun comes up so that I can have the resolve I need to say no to sin tomorrow. What you don't realize is the enemy just took a bunch of works, laid them on a platter and said, pick which one you think will please God and then do it the best you can. And it's Israel going, you know, we should have took that mountain yesterday. When we wake up tomorrow, everybody get your sword. We're going for it. And Moses says, guys, it's stupid. God's not going to go with you. He doesn't move through your flesh and they say no we're going to do it anyway and Moses says okay you're going to do it without his help because if you can get over this problem by fasting by praying by giving by working in the church by 4 30 a.m prayer meetings you don't need Jesus you just should have wised up two weeks ago Paul says to the Galatian church if righteousness came by working the law then Christ died in vain. I do not need a crucified and risen Savior. I just needed more willpower. And it is so binding us.